Overhaul the Actron vacuum pump CP7830. I'm going to completely disassemble the whole pump. This is one of the few times a crescent wrench comes in handy. Removing the front nozzle. When I reassemble, that's going to get uh, new Teflon tape. Remove the vacuum gauge. Here is the uh, parts kit that I bought. The kit comes with one tool, a Schrader valve remover. I found that uh, my uh, tire valve repair uh, tool works a lot better. What happened was the uh, Schrader valve was unscrewing, but it wouldn't come out. And I finally figured it out after it broke into a couple pieces that um, there's like rubber on the end of it. And um, it had expanded because I'd gotten fluid in the uh, pump. I, it was either transmission fluid or brake fluid. I can't remember which. One of the reasons why it, it would get fluid into the pump is because I was using the uh, brake bleeder kit. And it's just like a little... Um, container with a lid that unscrews and it's got a pump on one side of the lid. I mean, it's got a hose on one side of the lid and another hose on the other side. It goes to the pump and while I'm pumping fluids out, it will just fall over on its side and I'll all of a sudden pull some fluid in. So what I did is I'll show you this later. I glued a magnet to the bottom of the, um, of the container. I finally got the valve out and I knocked the camera over.
what I decided to use uh, to, to uh, take the uh, pump apart the barrel was a uh, strap wrench. What I need to do now is get the uh, the locking mechanism off the, the end of the shaft that uh, holds the trigger on the shaft. I tried several different tools. Finally got it off. Removed the main barrel. As you can see, I have a pair of vice grips clamped to the uh, vacuum pump. I wouldn't recommend doing this to the main barrel. I wouldn't use any kind of pliers or wrenches or anything. The strap wrench is about the only thing that won't deform it. And where I have this clamped on the um, on the uh, vacuum pump, it's after the the frame for the handle, and so it's even if it distorts a little bit, it doesn't have anything to do with the uh, pump sealing or anything. And there's that little booger that was in there that, uh, <laughs> the other part of the, uh, the Schrader valve. This is uh, part of a, it's like a flapper valve, I guess. It, uh, it's in the bottom of the cylinder. So to disassemble the end part of the, um, the compression gauge, I had to screw the uh, gauge back in to use that to steady uh, the wrench.
here's your old piston seal. And here's the new piston seal. Notice how it's got a, um, a taper and the highest part goes to the back of the piston. And you just pull the seal down over the, the piston. Remove the uh, seal off the front part of the, the uh, pump chamber. Two Schrader valves come with the kit. One is um, it's the, about the normal um, pressure you need to um, activate the valve. And the second one, it's like really, really light. It's minimal. And that's that goes internally. This one is the one that's uh, it's it's normal, you know, like normal pressure, like it's probably the same as using a, a tire valve. This is another tire tool I have. It's the, the tool and it's threaded on the end of a, um, of a, a, of a tire uh, valve stem. Make sure to clean out this hole. Then the light pressure uh, Schrader valve goes into the face or the front of the uh, piston. A lot of people say that um, these, this tool is brass or bronze, but it's just anodized uh, steel. And there's a the Schrader valve threaded into the uh, end of the piston.
this is the new uh, flapper valve, and it's got like a shaft with a, um, like a, I guess like you might think like a, a ball that's molded into the shaft that when you push it into the, the recess, it, it snaps into place. And uh, the new one's a little bit bigger and a little different. It won't snap in. I'm wondering if it's uh, the right one. So here I'm contrasting the old one and the new one. The old one on the right and the new one on the left. So what I decided to do is I'm going to um, take a pair of forceps and uh, grab the uh, shaft and try to pull it through and see if that will lock it into place. And so what I have to do is take the Schrader valve back out again. Listen to it. You can hear it snap into place. Then I put the Schrader valve back in. This tire valve tool that I'm using right now, um, I got that when I was working for Chevrolet back in the 70s. The, uh, tire, man, the tire man there uh, gave it to me. Then I assemble it onto the main cylinder. I insert the uh, piston and spring. When you put the print, spring on the piston, make sure it seats. Then screw it onto the trigger assembly.
Then you have to put in the trigger cross shaft. And the shoulder of the shaft is a little bit, um, it's a little bit the bigger diameter. So to facilitate getting everything assembled, what I did is I took a screwdriver and I spread both of the, um, the uprights for the trigger apart. And that allows you to slide up on the, um, the um, neck of the shaft. Gives you a lot more room. Now the dilemma, um, the, the little uh, lock nut that goes on the end there, I destroyed it getting it off. So I'm thinking about using an E-clip to hold everything together. I tried it, not even with any pressure, just the spring pressure of the piston and the, the E-clip shot off and it went somewhere across the room into another dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and just re reassemble it and think about it. And um, the, the nozzle has like a filter in the end of it. So my next idea is to take a die and uh, try to put threads on the end of the shaft. I think it was like an M4 by uh, 70. So that didn't work either. I had the right nut, but there's not enough uh, the diameter of the, the end of the shaft wasn't big enough to make uh, adequate threads. So what I did is I grinded it flat and then I drilled a hole in it, one, I think a 1 16th of an inch hole and then I'm going to put a cotter pin through.
both the nozzle and the gauge, I redid the, um, the Teflon tape on them. As you can see, it's all back together. And if you look carefully, <laughs> you can see the spring lane on the table. So I had to take it all apart and put it back together again, which really when that, all I had to do is unscrew the, the, uh, the cylinder from the, um, the handle frame and then put the, the, uh, pist the spring on the piston and, and, and reassemble it.
the gauge on the um, the vacuum pump is calibrated in uh, millimeters of mercury and uh, to convert that to PSI you have to multiply the number on the dial which is it's a three digit number by um, 0193368 so uh, my pump and I think it did this one was new went up to around uh, 600 uh, millimeters of mercury and so that's roughly about uh, 11 PSI. Here is the brake uh, bleeder reservoir that um, I use. I've basically nowadays just used the vacuum pump to, um, you know, to, tra to for transferring uh, fluids, you know, from, uh, you know, transmission, engine, uh, brake fluid, brake fluid more than any. I put a magnet on the bottom.